Now let's go back and pick up another torpedo and concentrate on the second question, where to release. There's one point which often seems confusing, so let's get it straight from the start. The sighting distance to the target at the time of release is not the range. The target will move closer during the time the fish is in the water. So the desired range, say 1,000 yards, must be estimated to the point of impact, not to the target at the time of release. Now the 1,000 yards the torpedo travels to the target's final position is partly in the air and partly in the water. At 200 miles an hour, dropped from 250 feet, the torpedo will travel about 400 yards in the air. To this figure must be added the 400 yards of water travel necessary to arm the torpedo. Therefore, a thousand yard range allows a safety factor large enough to prevent that foolish feeling when a torpedo hits but doesn't go off. Okay, Doug, but that's only half the story of where to release. You've got to aim the torpedo by aiming the airplane. Remember those practice runs you made on the trainer? The aiming problem consists of setting up an airplane course, and thereby a torpedo course, which leads the target. Leads it just enough so that at the end of the 30 seconds it takes a torpedo to cover that thousand yards, it will intersect the course of the target at the target. The torpedo director will help in the solution of this problem when you set in known or estimated factors during the run. First, you roll the target speed wheel to the estimated speed. Then, with the latch knob down, pull in the wheel until the arrow arm parallels the estimated course. At the time you're setting this parallel, be sure the target ship is in your sight. Twist the knob up and swing the sight to the rear of the target till it latches. At the same time, turn the airplane until the sight is on the target again. If you've timed the entire process right, you should be at the desired range when you straighten out or you want to release as soon as possible after the turn. With the airplane stable, not skidding, slipping, or turning, let her go. If you've done things right, you can't miss. But it's sort of hard to tell whether you did or not. That's why a torpedo camera in the nose of your airplane snapped a still picture when you press that release. With the negative set up on this assessing equipment, the instructor can show you just how you did. He can figure out, for one thing, where the torpedo hit. Then, most important, he can determine your range. This, together with altitude and airspeed, will tell whether the torpedo would have hit safe or armed. Remember, it's a dud if you don't let it run long enough in the water to arm. And that, again, is 400 yards of water travel. Now, this doesn't tell whether you were yawing or skidding, but your nose was three degrees up about right for a B-26 at dropping speed. Now, suppose your target had been dodging, and in combat, except where you get a lucky break, they'll dodge for all they're worth. Then you do things a bit different than you did for that stationary target. For one thing, you'd go in with your director locked straight forward. You'd estimate lead just like a deflection shot in gunnery. Keep an eye on the target's wake. That's the first giveaway of a dodging turn. For the most part, you're just going to have to guess where he'll be when your fish arrives. So it's a pretty good idea to cut your range down to a minimum, so long as you allow for enough water run to arm the torpedo. You might get away with a range of only 800 yards, if you're about 200 feet off the water when you drop. Doug, here's a piece of captured Jap newsreel. You see, they'll do everything they can to mess up an attack. They'll twist and squirm, they'll lay down smoke screens, they'll send up every shell and every fighter they've got. But then, you've got your own bag full of tricks. First of all, you don't go in alone. And you split up to attack from at least two angles with coordinated teamwork. You might hide up in the clouds, homing with radar when you have it, and drop down just in time to launch your torpedo. Or you might go in just off the surface of the water, where enemy direction finders are less effective. When one flight can hide in the glare of the sun, so much the better. If these tactics don't catch the enemy asleep, you'd better attack in force. Hit him simultaneously with everything you've got. Fighters to strafe and bother his gunners. Dive bombers to batter his decks.
and the big jobs from way up there to pattern bomb. When you all work together, they hammer at him from all sides and from above, while you slip in and deliver that solar plexus punch.